Hey developers, today we're going to look at Vue.js provide and inject and this is more of an advanced concept so we're going to take a look how we can use this to pass information from our parent component to deeply nested child components. So you can see here from the Vue.js website that provide and inject are primarily provided for advanced plugin component library use cases not recommended to use them in generic application code. But I think it's a good idea that we know how to use this because it could be another tool we can have in our toolbox for our Vue.js applications and it can be very helpful. And by the way, if you don't know me, my name is Eric Hanchett. I'm a Vue.js developer, Angular developer. I do have a lot of web development and front end experience. If you guys are interested in to learn more about me, I have a link below where you can click and sign up for my mailing list. You can learn all about Vue.js and you get a free Vue.js cheat sheet too, which is pretty cool. And please click like and subscribe, that really helps me. So let's take a look at this. So you have this provide, which you have this object, or you have a, a function that returns an object. And then your inject is either an array of strings or it's an object with some other things you can do with it. And basically the pair of options are used together to allow an ancestor component to serve as a dependency injector for all its descendants regardless of how deep the component hierarchy is, as long as they're in the same parent chain. All right, let's deep dive and take a look at that in more detail. So I went ahead and created a real basic app here. And all it is is just a single HTML file. I just put the source tag for view in there. I have our div, our entry point here. I just have a hello. I have a child component. Here's our child component here. And here's our new view where we are finding our child component here. And it's just returning hello world. And so let's make another thing here. Let's, let's call this info. And we'll make it a number called one, two, three. And let's have that show up right here too, info. And let's see if we can provide this one, two, three to our child component using this provide and inject that we just learned. All right, so what we need to do here is we'll add in something called provide. And in this provide, we can either make it as an object or we can have it a, have it a method that returns an object. So let's do that first. So we'll do provide here. We'll return. We're going to return something called foo. And we're going to say hi. Let's just see if we can do that first. And then inside our template here, we're going to add in this inject. And we're just going to make the inject have this array of strings, which we're going to call it foo. So we can see here, the way it works is we turn an object, and one of the keys in the object is foo. And then we're going to return inject foo here. So now we should have access to it inside the child component. So hello from child. So now if we put foo here, save it. You can see here we have hi. So you can see here we injected this foo hi right into here. Hello from child foo. So that's pretty neat. We could do that. But you're thinking, well, how do we pass this info down? Now, one thing you have to remember, and if we look back at the documentation of it, it clearly states that uh, the inject bindings are not reactive. So there's a way to get past that. This is intentional. However, if you pass down an observed object, properties in the object do remain reactive. So how do we create a, an observed object? Well, let's just try it the naive way. So we have foo high here. Why don't we just do this.info? Okay, let's save it. Okay, great. We see one, two, three. Great, we see one, two, three here. And I guess we're missing the O. But is it reactive? I mean, we could take a look. Let's let's just add a button here and press me. And let's have it just add one. So we're going to add a click. We're going to create a new method called press. And then here, we're going to create a methods. Well, we don't even need to do that. We could just do, we don't even create a method here. We're just going to do info. Uh, plus plus. If we save it there, we have a button. Now if we hit the button here, you can see the info, this number is moving, but the child number isn't. So it's definitely not being reactive. So how do we make this more reactive? So let's take a look here. So what we could do 
I'm going to delete this. I'm going to do a const. I'm going to create foo, and I'm going to have it just be an empty object like that. And then we're going to create object define property. So if you guys aren't familiar with that, you can look at the MDN documents, but it's a way we can create a, an object with uh, its own properties. So we know we're going to take this foo object, and we're going to add in, let's call it bar, and we're going to have an object here. And first, we're going to put enumerable true. And then we're going to do git. And the git is going to equal this dot, what would you call it, this dot info. And we have to return an object. So we're going to return. And remember, make sure you return as an object, just not foo. So you return foo like this. So actually, to make more sense, I'm going to call this info. So we're still going to inject foo here, but this time we're going to do foo.info. See what happens there. Oh, info is not defined. Let me fix that. All right, the way we fix that is we just need, these are quotes, single quotes around it. Refresh it. OK. Now when you hit press button, you can see they're both being reactive. So now we have created a reactive object. That's going to work correctly. So you can see here, this is kind of just a cool way, and instead of using props or using Vuex, it's a way to inject stuff down, uh, especially if you have a, a pretty nested hierarchy of components. You can use something like this, provide, to move things down. Obviously, you don't want to use it for everything, and the official documentations do recommend that you use it more for plugins, but it's a good idea to understand how it works. So if you like this type of video, please click that subscribe button. Let me know what you think. Thanks.